Oh, good. We're on? <laughs> hey, welcome. It's Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. This is day two. We're still figuring all this out. So, welcome at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. It is so quiet in this building. It's like creepy, eerie. All the lights are off, and usually at Wednesday night about 7 o'clock, there's 70, 80 kids uh, running uh, through the building, and the rangers and down to the basement, and people coming into the cafe and grabbing a coffee and getting ready for Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, but this week, it is just quiet around here, and that's going to be the new normal, probably for a little few weeks, and we're going to talk about that just to, here in a moment. We're going to let a few people hop on here, and then we've got some things that we want to share, some big news, some exciting stuff coming up in the future. If you've been going through the New Year's New Testament 90, uh, today you would have been in uh, late James and the beginning of 1 Peter, and I thought a few of these verses were super appropriate. I've seen this verse floating around a lot on social media, at least the middle one here. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hand, you sinners. And so I've seen that going around. So that's the new John 3, 16 uh, of the day. Wash your hand, you sinners. But then it also goes on and says, uh, Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. So this is a great time to humble ourselves before the Lord. But then he goes on, and a little more serious in James, always more serious for us tonight, in James 5. If there's any of you in trouble, he should pray. If anyone's happy, let him sing songs of praise. Is any of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. <clears throat> Elijah was a man just like us. But he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crop. I love verse 17. Elijah was a man just like us. Sometimes we put others up on pedestals, and oh, they were a prophet, or they were in the New Testament. They're just people like us. But they had faith, and they believed God, and God is the God of the miraculous, the creator of the universe. And God's able to do some wonderful things for prayer. And so just a little reminder out of James before we jump in here and get everybody online. Uh, if, if, you're, if you need prayer, pray. Uh, if you're going to rejoice, rejoice. Sometimes we pray, sometimes we're in trouble. Sometimes we're unhappy, sometimes we need others to pray for us. Sometimes we confess our sins one to another. But God is always there right in the midst of that. God is faithful. And so let's be people of prayer and faith. All right, well, it's about five after, so let's talk about uh, the future. You're probably... Uh, wondering what is going on in uh, businesses and work and schools, and it's just been a crazy, crazy couple of weeks here. We kind of muscled through the weekend. We made it through Sunday. We were only down about 20%, and so thanks to everybody who came out this weekend. We were hoping to make one more weekend. We had Rick Magoo coming in this weekend with Faith and Reason Seminar, and we really wanted to get him in, but it's just not going to happen. So the good news is that we are not going to cancel church. We're not going to cancel yeah. church. We're not going to be here. But we're not going to cancel church. And so that's the, that's the exception. There will be a few of us here, but we're going to meet you uh, on avenues like this. And so we're still going to be together. We're still going to be meeting. There's going to be worship, and we're going to join together. It's going to look a little bit different here for a while. Uh, we are going to stop all of our regular meeting times, Sunday school. Like I said, it's Wednesday night. There's nobody here. And time for we would gather here is the family of God for discipleship. So all that's going to stop just for a little while. Hopefully it's a very little while. And, uh, but we are going to move into some other more creative areas of getting together. So all that, just like everything else, is just going to come uh, to a halt. Or, but we're going to move in. This is going to be virtual Bethel. All right? So we're just going to connect in different ways. And what an exciting time. And, and it's as frustrating as a lot of social media is, what an incredible tool we have for these few weeks to be able to stay connected, to, to pray for one another, uh, to stay in contact. To worship together, to pray together. We had a great prayer meeting last night. A bunch of people jumped online, uh, bigger than anything we've ever gathered here uh, in a room because you got kids, you're at home, there's work. But a bunch of you jumped in with us and prayed. So I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to these next. I'm not excited about it, I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm looking kind of forward to what God's going to do here uh, these next few weeks. So, what's Sunday morning look like? That's probably the big question. That's kind of our big time together. What does a Sunday morning look like now? And so Sonia's going to share about the kids here just in a second. But we're going to move to one service at 1030 in the morning. So 1030 in the morning, we want you right here at Bethel of Sycamore. We've also just started a YouTube page, Bethel of Sycamore. That's kind of our constant across 
uh, our, our uh, different social media platforms at in Bethel Sick, and we'll be at 10:30, and we're gonna we're gonna worship the Lord. We're gonna have a, a small worship band together, and we're just gonna sing and worship the Lord all over the county. Yeah. That's gonna be exciting. And then I'm gonna share from the Word of God. We'll bring you some updates. We may have some testimonies, and we're gonna just have a regular worship service. Uh, and uh, we'll probably we'll work a little longer after that as we kind of go through it, and we'll get a little more long, a little more full. We'd hope to go online probably this fall. We kind of had this long-term plan throughout the summer, <laughs> putting pieces together, and that got ramped up until a week. And so this first few weeks, we're going to be adding pieces, and it's going to be getting a little bit better. Hopefully in a couple months, we've got the full board, everything we need, but we're not quite there. But join us at, at 1030 on Sunday mornings uh, for that. We're just going to have a great time. It's almost like, uh, and, and so I encourage it. So you can watch on your smartphone, you can watch on your TV. If you've got an app, you can hook your computer up to a TV. You can, you can mirror your phone to your TV. You can watch on your lap, lots of different ways you can, uh, you can watch. Now probably a few of you who are not watching have no access. <laughs> and we're trying to narrow those people down in our church and how can we get to them and maybe they can team up. Maybe you could have somebody over for Bethel and brunch. Yeah. And you invite an older couple over, someone who just doesn't have access, and you have your own little worship service, and we can connect that way. So just being creative. In the early New Testament, Acts chapter 2, what was one of the strengths mm -hmm. of the church? They got together, mm -hmm. they broke bread in each other's homes, they fellowship and they worship. And so this is like the 21st century and the 1st century meeting right in the middle. <laughs> and so we're going to meet in homes, and, but we're also going to be here electronically. Um, Pastor Ethan, what's going on with the youth? How are you guys going to be water, uh, going through all these waters? All right, so uh, we're going to be taking about that, that same uh, sense of direction as well. We are not going to have our youth services. We're not going to have remnant in this building. Uh, we'll actually be having our, our services. They're going to look a little bit different. Um, we're going to be changing it up from, from week to week with location and style. Um, a lot of exciting stuff uh, ahead. Uh, but it will still be at 6 o'clock on Sunday nights, but it will be on the remnant youth page. So if you show up here, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but we're just uh, we're going to be online as well. Um, and like Pastor was saying, this is a great opportunity uh, because sometimes, you know, maybe if you can't make it to a service, maybe if you can't, now we can bring the service to you. Um, and it's just going to be a great opportunity um, for, for you guys. It's going to be a great opportunity uh, for us. Um, and I, I encourage that same thing um, as well. You know, maybe, uh, maybe you're, you've been stuck at home all week and you want to have a friend over and they have never, ever come to church before. They won't come to youth. You can invite them over to your house and say, hey, I know you're over uh, and I apologize, even though you did this on purpose. And you pull out your phone and be like, I have to go to, I have to, go to church for the next 20 minutes. Why don't you watch with me? Um, use this as an evangelism yeah. tool. Um, use this to, to reach out to those around you. Our schedule is is a little bit wonky. You know, we're, we're not going to be having the Speed the Light rally anymore. They have had to postpone those. But Fine Arts is still going. Um, it, the, the venue has changed. We're not going to meet in a physical location. But we're doing video entries. Um, so Fine Arts is, is still going to be going. Make sure that you are following Remnant on social media. Starting tomorrow... Um, follow us on Instagram, on, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, um, and if you follow us, we're going to have some videos and some challenges, some devotions, some fun stuff, some serious stuff coming in between, back and forth um, uh, 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 throughout the week and, and throughout however long this, this season that we're looking at is going to be. Um, so don't see this as an excuse, don't see this um, as something fearful, but like I said uh, in our, our prayer meeting last night, use this as a tool to enhance your faith and to uh, enhance your uh, evangelism um, to you, to your friends, uh, and to your family. God is going to do incredible things. It might, it might take a while to get used to. It might seem different for a bit, but God will use this season if you let him use you. Yeah. So, yeah. Sonia, what about the kids? What about going for the kids? <laughs> well, um... Same thing, we'll be a, it'll be a little bit different, but on Sunday mornings we are going to have a children's uh, mini church, children's church. Uh, that will start at 10 o'clock. Uh, we will do about a 20-minute children's church. We'll do lessons, do some activities, um, and have a small group that will be helping us. Uh, and so we want you to tune in at 10 o'clock. We'll, we'll end hopefully around 
10 20 and you get a little bit of a break before uh, regular church service starts at 10 30. so make sure you join have the kids join at 10 o'clock on sunday morning and because we want to meet meet them there we want to still share the love of jesus with them and disciple them so uh that's that's a go one thing that i've been thinking about and just mulling over i just wanted to uh not put any more burden especially on you parents who uh the kids have come home to and you're teaching them at home these next uh, week or two or however long it is i didn't want to put another burden on you but at the same time i wanted to challenge our kids to still uh, be engaged in the things of the Lord. And so one of the things I thought about was kind of simple, and it's called this. Are you ready? I worked all day on this awesome so graphic. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the 10K Bible Challenge. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> 10K Bible Challenge. I'll put this down now. Basically, 10K, 10,000. Uh, I want to challenge our kids in our Bethel kids group this is ages that they come up to the older children's church that's ages six through sixth grade uh, to start reading their Bible and keeping track of the verses we want our kids to read in these next weeks 10,000 verses now that may seem like a whole lot of verses but we average about 30 kids on a Sunday morning in the older children's church and if they just read several verses a day that's going to add up quickly and so that's our 10K challenge. And I'm going to be challenging them to let, we're going to have some funny videos and funny things to challenge them on that. And it's their job to read. It's also their job to keep track. So on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, live on Facebook at 3 p.m., I'm going to do a little quick live uh, chat with you guys. And before that, I'm going to ask the parents to either text me or email me. Um, how many verses their kids have done up to that day? Then we'll start fresh after I give that that tally. We're gonna we're gonna watch the tally go up and up and up and up. And when they reach those ten thousand mark, ten thousand Bible verses, uh, then when we come back, we'll have a big pizza party during children's church and celebrate that. I don't believe that's too much of a challenge. I think it's a wonderful idea to get our kids engaged in reading God's word because you know what? That will build them up. That's only going to help them do better at home because God's word is alive and active and it will get into their hearts. Now, I understand that kids read at different levels. And so um, if you parents need to help some of your kids read, that's perfectly fine. Just keep track of how many verses they do. Um, and then I... Uh, Th those that can read on their own, let them read on their own. Maybe they have a paraphrased children's Bible. That's okay. That's okay. I want them to read at their level. And what we're going to do is ask each family, give me that family total. So if you have one child, we'll just give me that total. If you have three in our children's church, then give me a total of verses. I don't want this to be a competition on how each children, how many verses each child reads. We want to do this as a challenge together and hide God's word in our heart. I'm so excited about this, and I know these kids can do it. So make sure your kids turn in on Facebook Live on this page uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 3 p.m. And if they haven't finished their schoolwork, I'll make sure and encourage them to finish it for that day. Um, and we're going to hide God's word in our heart. One more challenge that I want to do, and um, this is called, I used to do this when I taught school. Um, many years ago. Um, it's called the Do Good Challenge. Um, I want you parents to watch and watch your kids and catch them doing good. I want the kids, if they're listening today, tonight, to make sure you find ways that you can do good. The Bible says whatever our hands find to do, let's do it with all of our heart as unto the Lord. So kids, one way you could do that is if your parents are asking you to do your schoolwork, then let's do it with a cheerful heart. Uh, or maybe you see a mess in a room and you, your mom or dad or somebody needs help cleaning up, clean it up without being asked. And parents, just keep an eye out on those kids. All those things that, that you see them that are doing good, just report it to me. I want to do shout outs to our kids. Now I can't do a shout out for every single kid in, in children's church on those Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, Facebook Live, but I do want to do that for those that are doing good. I'll keep a track so we're making sure it's fair and all those that are that are getting shout outs when we get to them. But I want to focus on these good things. There's so much bad focus right now. We're going to focus on the things that are doing 
good, those that are doing good. So kids, be creative. Think of things that you can bless your brothers or sisters or mom or dad or whoever's taking care of you, grandparents. Write a note, uh, draw a picture for somebody, give somebody a call. Find ways that you can show God's love and you can do good. And we're gonna shout out for that. I'm gonna share that and we're all gonna be encouraged, not just kids. Not just parents, but I think the whole church will be encouraged. Yeah. So that's our Father Do Good Challenge, our 10K Challenge, Bible verse. We're going to read 10,000 verses and Children's Church on Sunday mornings. All right, so Children's Church Sunday morning at 10. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, your kids don't have Facebook, so <laughs> check in with them and then watch with yes. them. And it'd be a nice time for you to do that together. And then 1030, we'll all be together, and then youth will do their thing. And so we're looking forward to that. Also, just throughout the week, we're going to try most evenings at 7 o'clock, we're going to try and do something. Tuesday night, we're going to be our prayer meeting. Wednesday night, we'll just have a little Bible study or maybe a devotional. And then we're just going to add in some other things. Uh, Sonia is, has an education degree, and she homeschooled and taught kindergarten and uh, Christian school for years. And I noticed on some social media today, we had some moms in tears and, uh, <laughs> and some kids. And all of a sudden, kids are home, and everybody's, it was just, everything's out of sync. And so maybe one night, we just do kind of a little round table, her just sharing and uh, some tips and what she's learned and been through and kind of her uh, battle stories and uh, along the way. Then another night we could just maybe do Q&As. And then another night we could talk about this or that, just some different things and creative ways and things to do with your family. So just some different topic nights and then we'll have our regular prayer and Bible study. But we're gonna try to do something just about every night at seven. I don't know if we can guarantee every night, but we'll try to do something just to kind of keep everybody engaged and keep you active. and and uh, not getting too stir crazy along the way and looking forward to that. So we're, we're uh, encouraged uh, for that. And then uh, just once again, to stay in contact, social media, Instagram and Twitter and our Facebook page, Bethel Sick or Bethel of Sycamore and all those just to kind of uh, Sick keep is SYC. Yeah, SYC, Bethel Sick is our Twitter and our Instagram. So just get involved, different ways you can keep up what's going on. Check our website, BethelofSycamore.org and we'll have uh, try to keep a lot of that updated also as we go through that. Uh, this would be, uh, speaking of new technology, this would be a great time uh, to use our online giving. And so uh, I know churches get a bad rap. They just want our money, and that's all they care about. If you've been around here at all, you know that is not the case here. Yeah. Yeah, at the same time, 95% of our bills aren't going to go away because we're not having shirts on Sunday. We're going to save a little bit in coffee and maybe some electricity. <laughs> but everything else stays pretty much the same. Staffing and all the other utilities and supplies and everything else we're going to need. We just added a new missionary yes, last week. Yes, we celebrated that on Sunday at our annual meeting. We're not going to tell him, sorry, we changed our mind. Uh, we're not going to do that. So our missionaries and everything it's, just needs to keep going. And so we encourage you to, to plug into that. Go to our website, Bethel uh, Sycamore. Dot org and uh, there's a quick link on there it's Vanco giving and they've been around 20 25 years they're they are one of the leaders in the industry so we feel safe that's who uh, we use and you can just set up I pay most of my bills online or write very few checks anymore so it's something most of you are very used to if you're not sure get a hold of us and or you can just drop off we're going to be keeping office hours and there's a our mailbox is locked if you need to drop something just a check off during the week whatever and once again, this isn't a huge money plea, but we, we just gotta keep everything going here too uh, along the way. Uh, Pastor Reed and I will continue working. Uh, we will be working more, not less. <laughs> yeah. You think, oh, they, they get the whole week off now. Yeah. No, <laughs> I clocked, I hit past 40 hours this afternoon, so it's Wednesday. And uh, so there's a lot of extra things going on. I had three meetings uh, today, plus everything else in this tonight. So uh, we're gonna be working hard. Don't yeah. worry about that. Yeah. And, uh, but just partner with us in that, and we're going to keep the thing going here. And uh, uh, you can text to give, and, and lots of different ways to drop off. But we're, once again, we're a family, we're a church, and uh, we're going to keep on marching ahead and uh, seeing Jesus lifted up and, and good things come. We, we ordered a bunch of equipment just yesterday, uh, several thousand dollars worth of equipment, because we got a lot of things we got to ramp up here really, really quick. So partner with us and join with us, and we're looking ahead to the future. Something exciting coming up this Friday, Saturday night. We've got a local group of us evangelical pastors that get together for prayer every week. We have breakfast once a month. We were hoping to do a good Friday service in a couple weeks. That may not happen. But uh, we've done some creative things in the past. This Saturday night at 5 o'clock, we're doing a drive-in service, a community service. And we bought a low-power transmitter. And we're gonna, you can just turn on your radio in your car and stay separate in, in your cocoon from everybody else around you. And we're going to just join together for a worship service outside in a big parking lot. 
If you're familiar, they're at the corner of uh, Barber Green and Peace Road. There's that big old, it used to be, depending how long you lived here, it used to be uh, <laughs> yeah, Caterpillar was in there, and then now it's uh, School Toolbox is in that kind of, there's a bunch of trailers at the other end, but School Toolbox side, we're gonna meet there five o'clock on Saturday for just a big worship service, turn on your radio, and we're looking forward to that. Hopefully we outgrow that parking lot, and that could be a beacon of hope and light yes. for our community. You're yeah. sick and tired of being inside by Saturday night. <laughs> Let's hop in the car, avoid everybody else, yep. but have our own little worship service with the kingdom of God. And a bunch of churches are hopping in with that. So that's not just us, but it's gonna be a really cool time. And we invite you out for that. We'll have more up on our Facebook page uh, about that. Also, if you were here Sunday, you notice that we have a free gift for you. And yeah. right now, media, we were gonna launch this out in a couple of weeks. <laughs> We called them Monday and said, hey, can we do this now? Yeah. Uh, we got a, a people that are home now, kids are home now. Right now, media is a, it's, it's been jokingly called the Netflix for Christians. It's 20,000 plus shows and Bible studies and Veggie Tales and kids Bible show. Man and women's conferences and Bible history, the events of your faith, um, Bible studies for couples, for parents, how to parent better, uh, conferences. It's just a ton, a ton of resources. And our church is providing that to you for free. And so we're gonna be rolling it out sooner than later. So this Sunday, if you're part of our system and we got your email, uh, that's gonna go out. You're gonna get an invitation this Sunday. You set up a free account. It's not gonna cost you anything. And uh, you can just, you can have an app on your phone, an app on your smart TV or on your laptop. Once again, if you're connected somehow with the internet, you can watch it. And it can be, once again, you can do it as a couple, you can do it as a family, Later on, once you can meet with people, you can do a Bible <laughs> study if you can actually be around others. Uh, but we're looking forward to that. We're going to use it for Sunday school classes for other things also. But we're going to try to get this into your hands on Sunday. So if you got kids at home and who knows what's on TV or on cable or on the satellite, but boy, they can go watch some Veggie Tales. Or you just need a break and you want to put on Bible Man. Or, and and there's, there's even age levels for the kids. This is good for 4 to 7. This is good for 8 to 12. And so uh, if, we're, if you're not in our system, we'll have some stuff up on, on our Facebook page and also on our website where you can just link directly in. So if you don't get an invitation, uh, you're still in or if you want to join up. And once again, that's all paid. That's our gift to you. And boy, talk about perfect timing. Uh, when I called the lady okay. and, and said, hey, can we do this sooner? She goes, I'm getting a lot of these calls from other <laughs> churches. Yeah. The same thing. We want to get this in the hands of you. So that's our gift to you. We love you. And we just want to kind of weather this time together. And hopefully this is over in a few weeks and we're kind of back to normal and you can hug and, and uh, shake hands again and be back in the family of God. So this is just for a season. And uh, I, to be honest, Monday I was just so frustrated. We had an emergency meeting in my living room with the staff and, and some of our key leaders, deacons and wives, and just began to brainstorm. And when I came out of there, I was actually excited. And there were some things we've been planning to do, but we've got to do them right now. And this is, a, and I'm going to share more on this Sunday, a little teaser, Sunday, uh, uh, tune in at 1030, but the great possibilities of what God wants, to, the church has always risen up yes. in times of hardship, of struggle, and of despair, and of darkness, the church shines bright, and so we're going to shine bright, and uh, there's some gloom and doom, and there's some unknowns out there, but what a great opportunity for us to shine bright, to love our neighbors, ourselves, and we'll share more on that on Sunday, so come back on Sunday at 1030. We'll do a little worship together, and we'll share some, we'll spread a little hope around. And, and what's that? All right, we also just, we sent a mass mailing out today. So if you're on our mailing list, all this will be in the letter too. And so some people aren't on Facebook, they're not on media, so they're going to, and, uh, and we'll talk more about Sunday. How do we connect with one another? How do we follow up? How can we be the church and the family of God to our brothers and sisters uh, and to encourage that? So anything else you guys have? All right. Hey, let's pray, and then we'll kind of close this out. Let's pray right now. Lord, we come in Jesus' name. Thank you for the wonderful family of God. And, uh, Lord, that's looked a lot of different ways over 2,000 years uh, from that early New Testament church until now. And so, God, but the one thing hasn't changed, that, God, we're brothers and sisters. Your spirit lives inside of us, and you've not given us a spirit of despair, but, God, uh, of joy and of hope and of love. And, Lord, that is not going to change. And we look forward to when you come again. But until then, we're going to be about your business. And so, uh, God, we just pray that you would uh, yes. bind us together over these next few weeks. Lord, we just pray for healing yes. for those who are yes. sick. Yes. God, we just pray that you would push back this virus and this disease. We see throughout Scripture, nothing is too difficult for you. You raise up and you put down. And so, God, we pray 
for the good report as men and women of God all around this world pray and intercede that God you will push this back and that God you will bring healing and hope quickly Lord and but but as we're walking through that process Lord may we shine bright for you and I pray for anybody who's discouraged tonight I pray for those stay-at-home mom and dads now and kids and and everything's just kind of out of whack I pray for grace and mercy and Lord just the, the peace of Christ would fill those homes and Lord, when we're done with this, we'll look back and say, boy, that was a rich time. Uh, it was weird. It was, it was uh, maybe scary at times. But God, as we get to the other side, we see your faithfulness. Uh, we make memories together even. And God, we see your hand there. You were faithful. You said you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. And God, that is just as true today as it was four weeks ago. And so God, we pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So thanks for hanging out with us. Be kind of sticking around social media. Don't stick around there all day long, all right? But just pop in every now and then, 7 o'clock. We're going to try to be around doing something. And we look forward to you. If there's something you need, text us, call us. Uh, yes. Phones still work. Let us know. Monday, and, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, and, and uh, we're around the office. We love you guys. And so we will see you soon. Thanks for coming. All right, bye-bye.